In this tutorial, we will learn how to fill an object with smoke, using the smoke simulation in Blender. We'll discuss the challenges that you might face in this, and we'll talk about the solutions. So let us start with our base file for this tutorial, where we have added an object like this. It is a closed mesh, with no opening on either side, and we want to fill this with some smoke. We have set up the material of this object as glass, and it is completely transparent. So we can see the smoke through the glass. Now we need a flow object and a domain object to create the smoke. Let us go to the wireframe view, with this x-ray option turned on. Then press 1, to go to the front end view. We'll first add one flow object here. So go to the add menu, and add a UV sphere. Let us resize it by a factor of 0.3, and we need to move it up, little above the ground plane. It should be just inside this mesh object. And to convert it to a flow object, go to the physics tab, and enable the fluid physics. This type field should be flow. Then, the flow type should be smoke, and this flow behavior should be inflow. We will go with all these default settings, but we'll enable this initial velocity, and in the normal field, let us enter a value like 2. Now, we also need to add a domain object. So again go to the add menu, and add one, cube. We need to ensure that the domain covers these objects here. So we need to enlarge the domain, maybe by a factor of 2. And we also need to move it upward, so that these objects come within this domain. Then to convert it into a smoke domain, go to the physics tab and enable the fluid physics, and this time, the type field should be domain. We will go with all these default options, and the domain type should be gas. If we now run the simulation, we'll see that the smoke is generating, but we need to confine this smoke within this glass face. So stop the simulation and select this object. We need to enable the fluid physics even for this, and the type should be effector. The effector type should be collision. And we need to enable this option called is planar. Now, go to the first frame and run the simulation. You'll see that the smoke generation has stopped. That is because our flow object is inside a closed mesh, without any opening, and the domain is bigger than these objects. So Blender somehow thinks that there is no need to generate the smoke, as it will never get outside the closed mesh. A temporary fix is available for this. For the domain object, we can enable this option, which is called Adaptive Domain. Let us again go to the first frame, and run the simulation. We'll see that the smoke is now generating, but this won't solve our problem, it is just temporary. As soon as the domain box gets bigger than this closed object, we'll see that the smoke generation has again stopped like before, so the simulation has come to an end, and the reason for this is same as before. The smoke domain is now bigger than the effector, and the flow object is completely enclosed within this. So Blender stops the smoke generation after a certain point, as we can see here. You may call it a bug, or maybe a limitation in Blender. But there is a workaround to resolve this issue, we will now discuss about that. The domain has to slightly truncate the effector, and the problem will be solved. So part of this object has to stay outside the domain, then Blender will continue the smoke simulation until the last frame. But this also means that this part of the effector object won't get any smoke at all. So here is the trick. Our camera is here. So if we truncate the object on this side, it won't be visible to our camera. We have to pick up the backside of an object that is opposite to the camera view. So select the domain, and then we have to first disable the option of adaptive domain. Now press 3 to go to the side view mode. Here is our camera. So let us move the domain this way, so that it slightly truncates our effector object. So this part of the effector is now outside the domain, and it won't get any smoke, but it won't be noticeable from this angle. That is basically a trade-off we need to do here. Now press 1 to again go to the front view, which is same as that of the camera angle for this composition. The use of this adaptive domain is now optional, but we'll still enable it, for a faster simulation. And then we'll run the simulation once again. If you are new to smoke simulation in Blender, you can watch our foundation level tutorial, where we have discussed the basic settings, and some tricks, that can definitely help you as a beginner, the link is given below in the video description. So we can see that the simulation did not stop this time, and the smoke is now filling this entire object, but the smoke profile does not look good, 
We have this kind of gap along the boundary walls, on all the sides, and the smoke is also kind of blocky, because we are using a low resolution division for the smoke. We can make it better by using a higher number in this resolution division, so we will increase this field and bake the smoke. Let us first go down. Here, change this type field to modular, and we have to also enable this is resumable option. All done, now back to the top, we can change this to say, 64. And then we will bake this smoke. Once this is complete, we will get some result like this. It is far better than what we saw earlier, but it is not perfect yet. We can still see some gap like this, between the smoke and the wall of this container, or the effector. If we increase the resolution divisions to 128, we will get a perfect result, now there is no gap between the smoke and the wall. This is the thickness of the effector material. But now we can see that the smoke did not fill the entire mesh, that is because the smoke is hotter and lighter than the surrounding, so we need to add some vorticity factor in order to spread the smoke everywhere inside this object. Back to the composition, let us first delete the cache. Now change the resolution divisions to 128. And we will also use some vorticity for a better result, but we don't want to give up the beauty of a natural smoke effect in the initial part. So we will increase this field only in the later half. Let us go to frame number 50. We will insert a keyframe for this value. Then, say for frame number 200, let us change this vorticity field to 0.5, and we need to keyframe this. And since we are using a higher value for the resolution divisions, we should use a higher initial velocity for our flow object, so select the flow object, and we will increase this normal velocity to maybe 3. Now we are ready to bake our smoke simulation for the final time. And we will get a result like this. Once the smoke is ready, you can add the background and an appropriate lighting, and maybe some camera movements, to get the final output. So here is the result. We rendered this using cycles. So now you know how to fill an object with smoke. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.